Hey, hey, and welcome to another Tech Tuesday. This is Chad from Ascension Worship. This week we've got another sub five, so we're doing a five minute or less explanation on gain. Uh, if you followed the show, we've done now, this will be the fourth episode on gain because it's that important. If your gain is wrong, everything is wrong. Uh, so what we're going to talk about today, there are different ways to, um, different methodologies, I guess you could say, of how to set gain. Uh, we're talking about one in particular today because it's the, uh, honestly, it's the best way to make sure that gain is appropriate across all all your platforms. So if you have a, a console that's not only controlling what the crowd hears, but is also controlling what the band is hearing in their in-ears, what the pastor's hearing in the wedges up front, uh, if you've got a live stream, if you've got recording, all that good stuff, um, there's one particular way that's the best way to make sure that gain is set appropriately uh, all the way across. And so that's what we're going to talk about today. So this week we're looking at a Behringer X32. Uh, the features I'm gonna show you are not feature specific to the X32. Uh, gain is pretty much the same in any digital or analog board. Um, so you'll get the idea even if you're not using this console. So we're gonna look at three things. One, we're gonna look at the gain, or in this case it's a preamp gain, um, or I might refer to it as input gain. This is where the sound is hitting the board. This is what's controlling the level going through the rest of the console. So this is the most important part. This is what we're talking about today. So we got our gain. Right next to it, we have a level meter. This is gonna show us how loud the signal is coming in to the gain. Um, and again, that's before any kind of processing. And then finally, we're gonna look at our fader down here, um, which is affecting the volume that the crowd is hearing. Um, so that's essentially our output volume. So I've got a bass over to the side. I'm gonna be uh, plucking some notes here. And if you look down here, you can see we're getting a little green light because we're getting some level coming through. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn up this gain and a couple rules. One, I want it to be a fairly hot signal, so jumping up on the meter some, but I don't want it anywhere near the red at the very top because that's when we start to get distortion. Um, so I'm gonna turn it up. You see we're getting some more green light. I'm playing fairly hard. Um, so what I wanna do is I'm gonna get it right around there to where it's starting to tap um, my first orange bar, or on some consoles it might be yellow, um, but I don't want it anywhere near the red. So if I turn the gain all the way up, you can see I'm starting to hit the red. That means that we're distorting. So we want it down to where we're starting to tap the first orange bar, um, but not necessarily going much further. On this console, that is about negative 18 dB. Um, so now that we have our gain set, uh, that's again controlling how much volume is going into all the other things. Now I can turn up my fader and you should hear that we're getting level in the house. So this is how much the crowd would be hearing. So the important idea here is that I'm using the fader to control what the crowd hears and not the gain because even though that will affect what the crowd hears, it also affects what everyone else hears as well. So your recordings, your stream, your band, everything that's gonna be connected to this channel. So if I turn my fader up, you can hear uh, as I'm playing, we're getting signal. If I were to turn the gain up and down, yes, it does affect what the crowd hears, but again, it will negatively affect um, what the band is hearing, any compressors and gates you have. It, it controls everything because this is the top of the signal. So again, have your fader down, set your gain so that you're starting to tap that orange or yellow uh, bar that you've got. And that gives you plenty of room. So if I were to really dig in, you can see I'm getting a hot signal, but I'm getting nowhere near the red, even when I'm playing the absolute hardest. So set your gain and then turn your fader up for what you want the crowd to hear. Easy. Hey, hey, this is Chad from Ascension Worship. Did you know that as an Ascension member church, you have access to a brand new worship song with free backing tracks and chord charts every month? On top of that, you can get discounts on audio, video, and lighting needs. So if your church needs equipment, installation, training, or even just advice, contact me directly at sales at ascensionworship.com, and we'd love to help you any way we can.